Yehova Malak, Allah Malamut, Yehova Malak, Yamini, Rakis, Yehova Gadola, Makarian Tios, Yehova Eranai, Yehova Elohim, Kurios Tios Penta Creta, Kurios Tios Pestos, Elda at Yehova. Yel Emna Yehova. Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, Opanta Greta. Baslios Baslion, Kai Kurios, Kurion. Yehova the Bar Halal, Elohim the Bar Halal. Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Geber. El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos. Ton Christon is on Ton Kurion. Kurion, Mohagion, Panta Greta, Gadol Gadol, Gebra. Yehova Ishmal Khan, Yehova Shamba. Yelnakum Yehova, Yelnakum Yapa. Natsak Israel, La Shaker, Gava, Gava. Riembos Yehova. Jesus Christos, Panta Greta, Gadol Gadol, Gebra. Moraros Nasa, Elohim Elohim, Ileila Yeshalut, Yehova Malak, Yehova Malak, Olam Olam Ad, Yehova Eleheno, Yehova Ekad, Gadol Gadol, Gebra. Zoan Logan, Ogar Tautios, Dulas, Desmias, Despotes, Dikai Sune, and Jesus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, 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 Numa, Pantacreta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebra, Yehova Ihe Elohim, Yehova Ihe Elohim. Ilayla Shalut, Jesus Christos, Yehova Malak, Gadol Gadol, Kebura. Derek Emanabakar, Meshfat, Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Siddhkeno, to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing the fishing work which has been given for us in Jeremiah 16, 16. Because the world which has to be the pleasure of our Lord God being renovated after the original creation in the literal six days has become the wound for God. An incurable wound. 
That's what he would say in Jeremiah chapter 13. When he emphasizes the wound which the things for making man has become incurable, as he would say, emphasizing the point in Jeremiah chapter 15, not in verse number, in not in verse number 13, but 15, he said, Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable, which refuseth to be healed? Will thou be altogether unto me as a liar and as a waters that fail? These words are very, very important for us because it is nothing but the great agony and the pain of Lord God the Father for making man because the wound of man has caused Lord God to be incurable. And what is that wound? Sin. And Christ, O Lord of God, cannot have any fellowship with sin. As we are going to look upon such sort of a sin, which Lord God the Father has been able to tell, why my wound or the world which has to be for me has become not like a grammatious program, not confirming to the image of my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And therefore the man whom I have made has become an absolute pain to me. So the world is nothing but it has become the wound of God. And how to solve it? The solution is very simple, knowing the wisdom of Lord God and growing up to become the will of Lord God. So, dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sin through rebound. Since Lord God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in biblical truth, we shall use the privacy of your priesthood to confess our sins through rebound. And let's come back and continue what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past so that the things which Lord God the Father has given these are nothing but wisdom when we walk according to his mind. So we shall continue dear brethren after this prayer sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pearly wonders of his word. You shall continue after this prayer. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming into the grace of Lord to learn the truth. We have nothing on this earth, O Lord, to really cherish and nourish in our lives. Apart from your valor, infallible and ignorant word of Lord God, which is so much valuable and precious than anything else on the face of the earth. And yet, O Lord, people are not happy to look upon such words. And all the days of life in the end written, they are spending in search of vanity. But I have given us this grace to learn the truth, so that, Lord, we could come back and understand your mind and make the things pertaining to your glory according to you. So, Father, the things which have been put and kept for us on today's stage and the past as we study them, we pray them entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten the challenge and to bless us by the message which I have given for us on today's stage and the past. In Christ's name we ask for in the Lord. May Lord God, the Holy Ghost, challenge and bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask for in the Lord. Amen. So dear brethren, many things which we need to learn from the viewpoint of Bible doctrine given for us. Because if a man whom Lord God the Father has made for his glory, and if this man has trying to become called to be the wound, then what a great pain it would be for Christ our Lord our God in creating them. Because what man has except breath in his nostrils fit for nothing. And it is not that what men heed or men praise 
extra breath in his nostrils, what for his worth? It is what Lord God the Father should be pleased by our ministry and by the work what we do. And if this man is not able to know the word of Lord God, and if he has become one kind of a kind, are the standards of this all sin nature life being built upon this earth, then what is this worth of a life that you're living? It is nothing but wound to God. The word incurable is nothing but man over there, Enosh. In Jeremiah 15, 18. And how come this man be become Enosh or Enosh to be cured when he becomes like Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in his thinking? Up until then, he can never be as a man whom Lord God the Father can really cherish and nourish in his life. So, dear brethren, we have this great verse for us in Ezekiel chapter 20, wherewith repeatedly he goes to teach that the name of my Lord God shall not be polluted among this heathen where the men reside. And we have been able to look the sin of one man caused death Obedience of the last Adam caused life unto all. So here we can understand in this great chapter of Ezekiel 20, as we were able to read these things, when the elders would come for you to ask for judgment or inquire the rash, they want to look where every thought has to go, how the renovation has to be, how their thought process has to be, Simple, nothing but the Word of God should be a thought process. Nothing but Bible doctrine should be a thought process. Because much is given for us and much is expected from us. And we can outdate all the people of the Old and the New Testament saints because we have been indwelt by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. How to illustrate this? If you can look upon in the present YouTube streaming videos called to be like the app of TikTok where or anything which they want to make it up to say. For example, if they want to copy a thing of a movie actor or a dance, whichever has been famous, you can look that. And uh, originally, the film heroine, heroine, they might have taken some time to practice and then to come back and dance and show to the world. But now, the TikTok or some of the apps which have recently come up, any man or any woman, they would love to say, saying that for the same song, they would love to dance or they would love to die like deliver. They would love to do anything which makes them to say, better than that film hero or heroine, we can do better. Not better, we can do best. That's what they think. If director intended to be good, actors acted better, but I will do the best. You know, this simple logic, if you can look what I'm trying to tell. In the entire Bible before the completion of the canon of scripture, any character if you can make up, Abraham, David, Daniel, Zechariah, Amos, in fact, indeed, the great one, John the Baptist, among all of them, he said, there is none greater in Matthew 11, but you being born least in this kingdom are far greater than John the Baptist, Elijah, Elisha, all these great men, of the past dispensation, even the present dispensation, including Paul or Peter or John, they had their portion of revolution to be revealed. And we have now the completed canon of scripture, the entire 66 books with the prophets and well as the apostles. And for them at least, it was a little part of them to play the role. Abraham, he played his role. Joseph, he played his role. 
Jacob, Noha, Enoch, Moses, all the things of the Bible, they had their roles to play. Now coming back to this illustration, what I've illustrated for you about TikTok or any other social media, these people, they would say, they can outact in best way than those film actor or, or hero or heroine, what you can call, actresses. They can really outdate them, outact them, and they can say, we are, we are doing greater than them. Oh, we can do best than them. So how many people will like? How many people will look? And they would say, please subscribe for us more. <laughs> the point what I want to illustrate for you is very simple, dear brethren. In the Bible, for them, the prophets as well as the apostles, they had that certain portion of revolution which they have to reveal, and they did it. And now we have a chance to outdate them. You have a chance to make it up to appear greater than what they did. Like the original hero, heroine, what they were able to sing and dance, you can do better than that, you have better dialect delivery than them. And you can say to the world, well, I can do better, and if you want, you can wear the same cosmetics and costumes for you. But here you have only one cosmetic and costume. Cosmetic, the beauty of the holiness. Costume, the garments of his holiness and righteousness being made in truth. Ephesians 4.24 And they at least couldn't have what you have now, the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, apart from the apostles. Then for them little was given. They did much. And for us much is given and much is expected. And besides that we have been told, we are greater than John the Baptist of Matthew chapter 11. In the great conversation, then he says, then how much more we can really make a lot of things to happen? How much we can really make up the things so that the world could know that we are the true disciples of the Lord of our God? How much we can outlive them, not in the terms of age, but in the terms of holiness and in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because in the past dispensation, the prophets couldn't be indwelt what we are indwelling now. Therefore, there is none greater than John the Baptist, he concludes in Matthew chapter 11, than how much more today we, being least though than John the Baptist, being born in this kingdom of the church age or the dispensation of this church age, then how much more we, in simple words to tell, how much more we can out-exceed them in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The kings, the temple workers, the priests or the prophets, a very certain few percent, less than two percent of the people could enjoy this ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. For them it was endowment, but for us it is enablement ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If a man can make up a TikTok video and he can show he's outdating, he's out-exceeding them, and he can say to the world saying that I've subscribed more for me, I can out-exceed than this hero or than that hero or any, any XYZ, the things which they want to make it up to look the world, then how much more the world is looking or waiting for the manifestation of the adult sons in Christ, as Romans 8, 18 through 19, or 16 through 19, so that the manifestation of the adult sons, they can come back and look and know and learn. Because much is given, much has been given for us, and much has been expected from us. Then, how much more we have to be curing the wound of my Lord God in the midst of such world? Jeremiah rightly called to be the weeping prophet because he calls the world the wound of God. That's what it is. The world is nothing but the wound of God, and that too incurable, he says in Jeremiah 15, 18. My wound is incurable because I have made man. I don't have any hopes that they will come back to the waters which I have intended for them to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And today we have been told in Jeremiah chapter 7, or John chapter 7, emphasizing how much of a fellowship we can reside day by day. The waters which can flow through. And we can have 
that waters which can be making the strange seed to be cleansed. How much of a water we can have? That's what he said in Jeremiah chapter 29 about the category of the false preachers who have been there over there. When he would say in verse number 23, it has to be, he says over here in verse number 25, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Because you sent letters in thy name unto all the people that are at Jerusalem, and lo, Zephaniah the son of Messiah, the priest, and to all the priests, saying, The Lord hath made the priest in the stead of, in the stead of Jehodiah the priest, that he should be officers in the house of the Lord for every man that is mad and maketh himself a prophet, that he should put put him in prison and in stocks. Now, therefore, why hast thou not reproved Jeremiah of Anathon, which maketh himself a prophet to you? For therefore he sent unto us in Babylon, saying, This captivity is long, build your houses, and dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. And Zephaniah the priest read this letter in the ears of Jeremiah the prophet. Then came the word of Lord God unto Jeremiah, saying, Send to all them of the captivity, saying, Thus said the Lord God concerning Shemiah the Nehemalite, because that Shemiah hath prophesied unto you, and I sent him not, and he caused you to trust in a lie. That's what the people are doing. Therefore, the wound has become incurable. There is no proper cleanliness of water, which can purely, purely clean them from that uncleanliness what they are having. Because they are having such sort of uncleanliness, dear brethren, that they are not able to realize how much of that uncleanliness is making them to be found in the standards of lies on this earth. Because these people, they're thinking they can have pure water, but it is not at all a pure water because it is the water of uncleanness. And this uncleanness water, what you can look or understand, he says that Lord God the Father hasn't sent them, but at these people, they're causing him to trust in a lie. And now he says, Therefore thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will punish Shemaiah, the Nehelmite, and his seed. He shall not have a man to dwell among his people, neither shall, be, shall he behold the good that I will do for my people, said the Lord God, because he, is, he has taught rebellion against the Lord. He is teaching them rebellion. What is rebellion? He is making them to divert out from the pressure that could be put upon his brain, and he can make the people to think like the terms of Christ. Any man who has been diverting out from the truth and if he's teaching to the congregation, apart from this great discipleship program in the Lord of a God, the Bible calls them, he has been teaching for you all a rebellion because he has an absolute pressure upon his head. So dear brethren, it could be like apostasy. What is the word for us over here called as been teaching rebellion? It will be something which has been turning aside or moving out from that which has been called for us to be in the word of Lord God. Therefore, they're going to have pressure upon their head. This is called to be rebellion for them. So that these people, they turn away from that rebellion, from that process of right word of Lord God, which they have to live. Therefore, dear brother, and he says over in Ezekiel chapter 20, saying that, Son of man, when these people are coming to inquire of the law, so they want to look, what is every thought process we need to be? What is that which has to be renovated? What is the thought process which we need to have? So then Lord God the Father says unto him, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel, and say unto them the word elders who have to actually be in a process of digging and taking deep down information from the word of Lord God, because these elders, what we are talking over here, these are the people which will guide to the next generation. That's what we read in Jeremiah saying, search the old paths and find rest over there. So the old paths are this what the elders have established. So he says, dig and take from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun, that which will be in your vigor and valor to perform. So tell to the elders and say unto them, thus said the Lord God, are you come to inquire as I live, said the Lord God, I will not at all be inquired because of you. That meant to say what you people wanted to know what I'm thinking, but I will not be inquired of you. 
that will be the last day of your life if you can find the time for on this earth. Because there is no need further for you to live on this earth. If Lord God has not been inquired by you to know the truth or to learn the truth or to understand the truth, then what's the point of living on this earth? Are you thinking something will be great for you on this earth without having been inquired by Lord God or not knowing the will of Lord God or not performing the marvelous glory of Lord God? You may be thinking that it's very happy for you without being in touch with the word of Lord God, the great agony of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When he would say, emphasizing the point that Eli, Eli, Lama Sabatani, he knows very well because he cannot be far away from the discipleship program of the Lord God, which has been intended by Lord God for him. So not even a single breath he want to be far away from the things pertaining to Lord God's will. Therefore, he says over here, glory you in his holy name. Let the heart of them that rejoice, that seek the Lord. You know, this is very, very important. The word seek again, he calls over here, not the rush, but bakash. That is, the people who are having the desire. You know, you have the love of your life, your soulmate, and they haven't been able to meet over the past 10 days. And then, the way have you bakash, diligently seek. You have a WhatsApp, look upon a DP waiting for her to reply, but you're not able to talk to her, communicate to her, you know that, desire what you'll be waiting for her. That's the word bakash, you desire, and then the meaning of that is your body from the rising of the sun till to the going of the sun, always remembering the words what you and her spoke. The same thing over here he says, the Lord God whom you seek, whom you bakash, for them, their heart will rejoice. And the word rejoice over here has been called as samak. And that what samak meant to say, what no matter what, I mean, with the pressure upon your blood, they're going to build a wall of fortification to glorify Lord God. A samak is nothing but a spontaneous expression of excitement and cheer. A spontaneous expression of excitement and cheer. That's what it is called to be samak or rejoice. So he says, glory you in his holy name. The word glory over here, it has been called as halal, to shine forth. That's not just kabod, because when the word glory being translated, it will be kabod. But here he says halal, shine forth, look upon and show forth to the world the attributes of Lord God. That's what you have to actually shine forth. That's what the word is called to be glory. And the word over here is nothing but no matter whatever it is, your body shall have a great expression of joy because you have been joining as disciple to the Lord God. Such are the one are going to shine forth his holy name. It is not glory you in his holy name. Shine forth his holy name. This is what we have to be diligently in the sight of Lord God. We have to shine forth His holy name. Not just to glory. And how you can shine forth when your body is being real, your disciple to Lord God. Therefore, He said, they want to come and inquire by me, but they cannot be inquired by me. That should be the death of your day that day. Because you cannot go to live a life anything worth let it be anything on the face of the earth. You cannot be worth if you've not been having fellowship with Lord God. Therefore, rightly in Jeremiah 15, 18, he said, The incurable pain or wound of Lord God, and he thinketh why at least he made man. The pain what is perpetually giving me. And moreover, in the church age, what we are going through, we are inexcusable. Therefore, we have been able to look upon the four characters of Satan from Psalms 91 in verse number 13. First one, speaking about the standards, what you can call as lion. The second one, we were looking upon the thought called as adder. The third one is ang lion. The fourth one is dragon. In the second category of adder, we can look how the false pastor teachers are entering, including that today. Yesterday, we looked upon a woman being a pastor teacher. Though she's not been given that bona fide gift, she doesn't have this bona fide gift because we told 
In 1 Corinthians 11, 3, if Christ, the Lord of God, is head for a man and for a woman, he is the head called to be her right man or husband. Therefore, in Numbers chapter 13, that small piece of category of information, the 15 verses, we can look for a man, there is no excuse for him to change the things. But whereas for a woman, she has an excuse of a clause to be saying, she can be forgiven because her husband didn't allow, she can be forgiven because her father didn't allow. So her, her, her oath, what she's been able to take, it can be disannulled. But whereas for a man, it's inexcusable because it is her husband who's going to fulfill that oath for her. And the same thing over here again, if we can look in the next, very next chapter of Numbers 31, the way how Balaam prophesied over them, saying that how the sin could be, though he wanted to curse, he couldn't. But he goes to give a thought process to that king, saying that let the Midianites come and enter. But Lord God the Father wanted those Midianites to be vexed off completely. And now here we can look upon the way how those captains were there. They couldn't go to destroy completely the things pertaining to the commandment of the Lord of a God. And Moses was very wroth upon them because they couldn't do what was the intention of Lord God to be done through them. If you can look up on the chapter of Numbers 31 again, he says over here in verse number 1, saying that, Avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. The word avenge over here, is nothing but your brethren called to be nakam, that is to take vengeance. Again, followed by the word nakam, twice the word over here which has been called to take vengeance, to take vengeance. That's what you have to look. So he says over there in Numbers 25 as well, saying that the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Vex the Midianites and smite them. For they vex you with their wiles. That's what deceitful nature, because they make your vigor and valor not to become grammatious program. Neither you can go and make disciples of all the nations. Therefore, they have beguiled you, he said. The word beguiled over there again, nakal, nakal. When you find these two words with the wiles as well as it is nakal. Again, for the word beguiled is also nakal. In the matter of Poer and in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of a prince of Midian, the sister, which was slain in the day of the plague for poor's sake. That is what Phineas was done that. So here if we can look upon the way how he says, wax them, he knows very well why he's telling that he has to wax them. Because these people, they were not able to match to the thinking of Lord God. So he says that you people should go and wax them. The word over here, what we can find for wax, is called to be again nakam, nakam, N-A-Q-A-M, N-A-Q-A-M. And then Moses spoke unto the people, saying, Arm yourselves, arm some of yourselves unto the war, and let them go against the Midianites, and avenge them, the Lord of, the, the avenge them, the Lord of Midian. And avenge the Lord of Midian, of every tribe a thousand throughout all the tribes of Israel. And then he says over here, saying that throughout all the tribes of Israel shall you send to the war. So they were delivered out of thousands of Israel, a thousand of every tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. And Moses sent them to the war, a thousand of every tribe, them and Phineas, the son of Elias, the priest to the war, with the holy instruments and with the trumpets to blow. The word trumpet is nothing but building up a wall of fortification to put pressure upon pressure upon their head. That's how we're going to blow up because the distorted thinking has to be removed. The same thing today what we look is to blow up the distorted thinking in your mind by giving you the right word of Lord God. So if you can name it like a trumpet ministry, if you can understand, first building up a wall of fortification to remove the pressure which has been there, the pressure which has been inculcated into their head. And they war against the Midianites as the Lord commanded Moses and they slew all the males. You know, they went to war. They went along to put pressure upon their body and they commanded as Moses and they slew all the male. That is what they looked upon to harag rather than what we have read in Numbers chapter 25 in verse number 4 to hang them in the daylight. So here also you can look the same thing. They went for harag rather than slaving all the ones. So they slaved the kings of Midianites. Beside the rest of them they were slain, namely Evi and then Rekam, Zur, Hur, Reba, five kings of Midian, Balaam, also the son of Boer, they slave with the sword. You know, even Balaam is also been taken out. 
therefore you can find him second peter 3 emphasizing the one who went after the wages of balaam or jude we can find out in second peter the one who has been recorded to be like a false one inculcated in the pages of bible doctrine because he was not worthy so he says in jude in, in jude 1 11 he says just jude was loving saying that warn to them for they have gone in the way of cain and ran greedily after the error of balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of korah so where they went for the greedy matter so here also we can look upon in second peter 2 also which have forsaken the right way and have gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Therefore we have been told, the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves with many sorrows. That's what they're going to do, because this is what the root cause for all evil is for man on this earth. So now they also slave this Balaam. So he said, they slave the kings of Midian beside the rest of them that were slain were heavy, that meant to say my desire, and then Rekham, what you can lock, it meant to say for the for the for the process of becoming much colored, mixed colored, the Zur, what we can call like a rock, and then the word Hur, which is called to be the whole, and then Reba, which has been called to be four, and then the word he says, the five kings of Midian followed by the Balaam, the son of Boar, they slave with the sword. And the children of Israel took all the women of Midian captivities and their little ones and took the spoil of all the cattle and all the flocks and all the goods. And they burnt all the cities wherein they dwelt and all their godly castles with fire. And they took all the spoil and all the prey, both of the men of the beasts. And they brought the captives and the prey and the spoil unto Moses and Elias the priest and unto the congregation of the children of Israel unto the camp of the plains of Moab, which were which are by Jordan near Jericho. And Moses and Elias the priest and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet them without the camp. And Moses was wrath with the officers. The word wrath meant to say was displeased, get sad. Whenever displeased happens, it meant to say from the rising of the sun to the going of the sun, there is pressure while he's opening up his mouth. That means he's not happy. That is the way how these people, which they have to be obeying for the word of Lord God, that they have failed. The same displeasure will be for us as well. Because we have not come to fulfill the will of Lord God the Father. Because many of the times we are going to do half. Some of the times we don't even do, even begin. That's what Christ the Lord of God said. I have completely fulfilled your will, O Lord, on this earth. And he prays in John 17, 4. And then he <coughs> repeatedly teaches. In John chapter 4 as well, my meat is to do the will of Lord God the Father. So here, if you can understand how Lord God the Father wrath will be upon you, because the way how Saul didn't do the full ministry to destroy the Amalekites, so you're doing your work. How much of your things we have to be looking now as per growing up in grace, letting go the basic fundamental things of Hebrews 6, 1 and 1 for perfection, but that way we are standing. Yet we are still the same. So dear brethren, he says, Katsab. He was very displeased. He was wrath. He proved to be provoking himself to be for the anger. Because here if we can look from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun, there is a constant pressure when you open up your mouth. So he has been so much wrath upon the officers of the host with the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, which came from the battle. And Moses said unto them, Have you saved all these women alive? Behold, this caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam. That's what he makes over here to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Poer, and there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. You know what was that plague? The same plague what is happening today for us in our pulpits. The woman has been said not to become a preacher or a man. She has become like a plague now. Because she is able to use a vigor and valor to act a structure, to open up her mouth against the word of God. Though she thinks that she is preaching the word of God, but her activities are exactly against the word of God. 
So this is what the woman can do. This is what the woman does. So what does he say now? What counsel he has taken? He says, let them be as we read in Numbers 25. The way how he has taken counsel to destroy these people. Though he wanted to curse, he couldn't. Therefore, when Balaam is also being slayed out over here in this battle, they couldn't respect him saying that he is the servant of God or Lord. No, they didn't. They simply slayed him out. And now he says, why you have kept alive this woman? That's why today women preachers are attending the churches. The other kind of thought what we can look over there in Psalms 91 in verse number 13, they transform to become the angels of light. Having no proper fear of the word of Lord God. If any woman truly has the fear of Lord God, then for sure she will never be a preacher over man in the church. That's how the world is running today. Then how can you shine forth in his holy name? How can the world come to know? What a great thinking Lord God the Father has kept for us on this earth when we walk according to his terms. How come the world can come to know about it? Therefore the wound of my Lord God has become incurable in the midst of such people. Though he would say, my name should be shining forth from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun. And if they would come to inquire, they should come to know that you people are having the right word of Lord God, you people are having the right will of Lord God, you people are having the marvelous glory of Lord God. That's what they should come to know. But you can understand it is not coming that so that the people are not able to look and say, the Lord God the Father has to shine forth through your lives. So he says over here in Psalms, dear brethren, in verse one, in chapter one of I, in verse number three, shine forth, halal, make the world to understand that your body is so happy on this earth because it has been committing itself to the discipleship program of Lord God. Shine forth, halal. Where in his holy name, the character of him is holy, though so that now your heart will rejoice, a constant, spontaneous expression of excitement and cheer, no matter what may be the pressure you have in your blood to build up such sort of a wall of fortification that you fear nothing, you fear no evil. So he says, let the heart of them that rejoice may bakash, search for something or for answers to desire. And what the bakash, the Lord God. But here he says, though you inquire of me, I will not be inquired of you. Because you people are not shining forth. You're not people becoming that which has to be a great solution for my pain, my incurable pain, the wound which has been there in the world. And right now in the church age, the believers are wounding a lot because though much has been given for you and much has been expected from you, yet you people are wounding a lot. He can say how? By grieving and squelching and waxing and lying and resisting to Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by not knowing the truth, by not learning the truth, by not becoming the truth to these people. You are really making up a great pain to be incurable in the sight of Lord God. That's what you're doing now. The much has been given for you to know the word of Lord God and make the word of Lord God to be shined by the terms of your life in this world. Christians are not even having a single ounce of doctrine in their frontal lobe to talk about the truth. You know, people will come to search the truth in you. People will come to look upon the light in you, says Philippians 2, 14 and 15. Shine forth as light luminaries in the midst of such powers and crooked nation generations. So that you can be the greatest one, as you can understand the word TikTok we illustrated for you. Outdate them all. Outdate them all in the past, in the present. Because they had a little bit of information. For example, Paul, the 14 books, what he has written. Peter, the three books, first and second Peter, followed by the Gospel of Mark. Which has to be the Peter Gospel there. Apostle John, the five books. And then followed by that Gospel of John. 
So they have a little bit of little bit of information to give for you to complete the Bible. But now you're having the completed Bible in you. The entire can of scripture you have in you. The Lord's mind you have completely in you. Then how much more accurate you ought to be in the Lord God's plan. How much you can easily make to shine as light luminaries in the midst of such powers and crookedness and generations by holding forth the word of Lord God, laboring day by day in the word of Lord God, and shining and telling to this perverse and crooked nation generations, this is Christ. I have formed Christ in me. Look the true light. Look the true peace. Because those elders, Zacchaeus, they come to inquire, he said in Ezekiel chapter 20, but I will not be inquired of them, he said. But now in the present Christendom, he says, shine like light luminaries. But the people are given more, unexpected more, but the people are giving a great damage of pain to Lord God the Father than it has ever been given. When John the Baptist was being designed for a very special ministry about his father who could say about him saying that son you will be the prophet of the highest and in that Luke chapter when we look upon those words it should really prick our heart to understand the way how his father is talking about him so he says in verse 76 of Luke and you, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. For you shall go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the valley of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. That meant to say what the prophecy about him, what it shall be. And he fulfilled it. The same thing for us as well, if we can look upon not given the full ministry in the past for Isaiah 58, if we can understand some of the words over here. The fast what you can go to be in the Lord God, he said. Daily you are coming to seek me. Therefore he says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Again, the word trumpet over here is nothing but to make them to be like a sofer, like a scribe. It is not the same trumpet of the word what we look in Ezekiel chapter Numbers, in, sorry, not Ezekiel, in Numbers chapter 31, when the trumpet shall be blown. That meant to say double pressure. But now here it meant to say trumpet, which is nothing but like a sofer, and show my people the transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. So at the seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. And now he says, Wherefore have we fasted? Say, they, and you see us not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? And you take us no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Now he says, Behold, you fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast an acceptable day to the Lord God? Now he says what he wants. Is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of the wickedness? That's what we look in Luke 1 after the time of John the Baptist about his birth, what he has been called to be the prophet of the highest and preparing the ways of Lord God and what he shall do there. He says over here in Luke chapter 1, emphasizing his work, saying that gives knowledge of salvation. And that giving knowledge of salvation is simply, as we can say over here, to say that, to lose the bands of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to, to and to let the oppressed go free, that to break every yoke, giving knowledge. That's what people are looking for on the earth. You know, people may not understand the difference between wisdom and knowledge. And they may ask, what is wisdom and how to apply it? Wisdom, for example, to illustrate, is nothing but 
to be aware of the situations which have already been revealed. And then, when such same situation will appear for you in your life, you're going to easily overcome it by applying what, has, what you have already known from the information from it. And for example, if you can understand, when you read the Bible, you read the Bible, you have the example of Joseph. And the same situation arises in your life, the way how Fortifor wife goes to tempt. And she tempts him day by day, the Bible says day by day. She's waxing his soul to sin. And he says no, and one final day she thinketh that he can catch, she can catch hold of his garment. And he runs off there. If that same situation is there for you in your life, what are they going to do now? The logic is very simple. You have already had the knowledge to look what is going to happen. So, the same example what Joseph has gone through in life, you apply for your particular situation over there with whomsoever you have been tempted or been making to fall for sin and defile your body because your body should be pure to Lord God. So before that, what you do, you have already noted that what David did, you have noted that what Joseph did, or you have noted what the things pertaining to the great men in the Bible did. So what do you do now? You simply keep them as a memory, applies to the situation and run off. That's called to be wisdom. Knowing that similar situations, that means to say what the formula is the same, the problems are different. That's what you do in a mathematical equation. The formula is the same, the problem steps, what you have, will be with different numbers. It will not be the exact thing what you're going to get in your textbook to appear in the exam. The numbers may change, but the formula will be the same. The same thing over here as well. But you should know the formula. Knowing formula is knowledge. Applying formula is wisdom. You can have a gun and you know how to operate it is knowledge. When to operate it is wisdom. And the people are searching for knowledge. And you have to be that wisdom. So that you have already learned that knowledge and you have been successful in the day-to-day -day affairs of life. And today people are seeking and searching to, to be set free loose from the bonds of eternal death. That's what he said in Jude. You make up your prayer when he calls. It's a very great, great pain when Jude is concluding his episode. We people may be thinking we are so happy to be, to look that our life has been enjoyed like the unbelievers who have been uh, walking vanity in this life. You know, the way how having their understanding darkened, alienated from the plan and the life of God. You know, you're also just walking like that without having your proper knowledge over here. So, you know, he says in verse number 23, And others save with fear, pulling them out in the fire. That means with your prayer in the Holy Spirit, having to learn the word of Lord God, to read in the time, to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he says. Save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Because as many people as we can pull them out from the fire. Because this is the right duty for us. And these people, they're not aware about that death. <coughs> Eternal death. They're not aware about the knowledge, what will happen if they ignore Christ. Therefore, Christ, the Lord of God said, Is this the fast you look? But I look for such a fast. The pressure that could be upon your blood. I'm looking for such a fast in you, whether you believe it or not. I want the bonds of this man to be released. And he says the category is over here. To lose the bands of the wickedness. To do the heavy burdens. To let go the oppressed free. So that you may break every yoke. That's what John the Baptist could do when he was being prophesied by his father. 
And today I've been called to be greater than John the Baptist than what you're doing. When you come to inquire, Lord God, or if at all you come to inquire, Lord God, what are you inquiring? Day by day looking up on your WhatsApp status quo or your stupid YouTube life or whatever it is in your smartphone life. That's what you're inquiring today. Which girlfriend, which boy, what are the most what you can do in this flash? Do you have the knowledge to be wise what will happen after you die? That's what Moses says in Deuteronomy 32, verse 29. Oh, these people would be wise to know the later end. Oh, these people would be wise. They could consider and calculate the life after that. If at all, they would be wise. You know, the same thing is happening today in the world. What best you can do with this flesh? What best? Lust of flesh, lust of fire, pride of life. <laughs> You're still in the four characters of that Satan mentioned in 91.13. You are not at all in the character of what we can look over here in Psalms 91.14. If you are there, a man of Psalms 91.14, you will fear none. You don't want anyone. You know why? Because he said... You are going to set his love upon me. Therefore, you are going to first straight down. You are going to make sure to get every thought in your direct way of business. To be renovated in your head to become like a grammatist to the Lord God. And then you are going to trample them down, no matter whatever it is, in your head, in your blood, your thought process, whatever it is. You are going to make it up to say any pressure. You are simply going to trample it down. Let it be any problem in this life. For you it is nothing but to set your love upon Christ. And therefore what you do, you glory Him. You show forth His praises in His holy name. And your heart will rejoice because you are seeking the Lord God. What a great pleasure it is when I have been sought by Lord God. The eyes of the Lord God run to and fro to seek. Those men whose hearts are loyal unto Christ, you have been sought by Lord God. What a great happiness it is to your heart. That's what he said in Second Chronicles 16.9. The eyes of the Lord God run to and forth through the entire world to find those men whose hearts are loyal unto God. And your heart is found unto Lord God to be loyal. Then you have a constant pleasure, rejoicing pleasure. The pleasure that is so great for you, dear brother, and you will never understand about that pleasure. It's really awesome. A spontaneous expression of joy. Because you will not have anything to fear. You will simply trade down Satan. You will simply trample down Satan under your feet. There is no excuse for that. You will trade down. You will trample down. Now what a great joy you will be having every day. Because he said you have set his love upon me. And the word over here love is nothing but your brethren to make up. Your thought process to be built up to such an extent as the word we read in Genesis 3.16, desire towards the right man, tesuka. Over here the word is called to be kasak. And the word over here is kasak is nothing but joining together in love through a connection. So what you do now, you're going to build up a wall of fortification to make sure every thought from the rising of the sun till to the going of the sun is purely Bible doctrine. That's what you make it up. That's the love, he said, because you have set a love upon me, therefore I am going to palat you. That's what we read. Rule, the husband will rule over a woman. And how he's going to rule, we read the word mashal. The meaning of the word mashal over there in Genesis 3.16. Dear brethren, it is nothing but to make sure you're going to make her blood to be in the process of making her every thought into discipleship program. The same thing over here in, number, in Psalms 91 in verse number 14, Palat is nothing but your brethren to make sure whenever you open up your mouth, discipleship program is what emerges out from your soul, from your inner mind. This is the word having to say he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I am going to deliver him. You know, what a blessing is that? No money can deliver you out of this earth. No foolish nature of this earth can really make you to have that great peace and consolation with Lord God. Therefore, in Isaiah chapter 13, verse number 15, we have been told, emphasizing, to return unto the Lord God and have rest in him. Then you're going to find for you 
day by day the required pasture of Bible doctrine to the viewpoint of the Word of Lord God. Take up your U-turn and come back to say in a vigor and valor you have to build up a wall of fortification for doctrine. The word rest over here it has been called as nakath and the meaning of the word nakath over here is dear brethren to make it up all vigor and valor what you have in your body for example for John the Baptist the health the strength and the things pertaining to be the vigor of his life was the food what he ate over there in the wilderness. The same thing over here you have in this wilderness called to be on this earth which are pilgrimaging now. The food, the strength and the vigor and valor for you to be of a great health will be nothing but Bible doctrine. And that to being taught in the, in the exegetical standards. Therefore you are going to have a vigor and valor to such an extent that it will be building up a wall of fortification for Christ. That's what he says. In returning and in rust you will be saved. You know what a great peace it is. Because you will be delivered, dear brethren, and in quietness and in confidence. The word shakath, again, the thought process from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun, which has to be in your soul, and making up your body and your soul to build up such sort of a wall of fortification, that it will be your Geburah strength. A Geburah strength. And that's what you need to look at. Geburah strength. So that, dear brethren, you build up a wall of fortification to such an extent in your body to say you're going to get every thought into captivity for Christ. But he says you are not willing to make up your body to have a joy in daily learning the word of God. This is for Christians first. As the elders were said in Ezekiel 20, you'll not be unfair of me. Then what will be the fate of those unbelievers, dear brethren? Therefore, you being Christian, be very careful. Just don't think you have come over here to swallow something like the food what you eat and drink. It can easily get into your body and soul. That's as good as to say, believed in the Lord. You know, it's very simple. <laughs> To be saved as Christian is very simple, but the cost of discipleship program is to rest. And that's what many people are not able to crack it up. But he would not be having that great desire, he said, Abba, you're not willing, you're not accepting, you're not yielding, your body is not at all happy to come and learn the word of Lord God, to inquire the teachings of my Lord God. Therefore, dear brethren, he said, in returning and in rest, you shall have quietness. And in having the things pertaining to what we can call over here. In returning and in rest, you will be saved. You will come to learn doctrine. In quietness and in confidence, it shall be your strength. But people not happy for this. Since you have set his love, he said, I will deliver you. And now what does he say? I will set you on high, Sageb. It's inaccessibly high position, no matter what may be the pressure. You need to add a structure in your body to get every thought into captivity for Christ. Because it's a high place of defense and protection. So he says over here, Sageb, inaccessibly high. Because he has set his love, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he said, because he has known my name, he became one with me, he has become acquainted to be one flash. That's a very unique word called to be Yada. Because the word over here, what we can look in the Greek is Oida, the same thing what we can learn in the Sanskrit for Veda. The word over here, it meant to say, my every viewpoint is been brought into captivity for Christ according to his thought process, the thought process of Bible doctrine. Because he has known me, and he says, what he has known, he has known my character. That's the word name, Sham. Therefore, in his every thought, in his blood, it is word of God, word of God, word of God. I will deliver them. I will give them. You know, what a great joy you're going to have further. He says now, He shall call upon me and I will answer. I will erase out his standards of distorted thinking. But the crowd of Ezekiel chapter 20, he says to them, You are though inquiring of me, I will not be inquired by you because your people are not worthy. You are acting willingly. 
You have been taught a rebellion and lies. Therefore, my name has been polluted, Kalal. That meant to say what? There is no discipleship program in your churches for me. And every man is happy to come weekly once to the church. And people are not at all happy to know the word of Lord God and accurately take in the word of Lord God. They are not at all happy for that. They're very far away from discipleship program. You know, these things are very, very essential for us, dear brother. You people are not at all happy, he says. You're not at all looking upon for discipleship program, he says. And what's the point of your life? What for your word then? What do you think you can make it up your life to be happy? Your distorted thinking. The thinking of the world, no matter however the best a best man can think, to say that he's genius, he's this, he's that, you know, like the past people in the time of my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, Caesar, or to be the genius one who has established the structure of Rome so that that ministry could run for another 200 or 500 years of his planning. So you may say he's a great genius. <laughs> All those geniusness, the wisdom of the world, is foolishness in the sight of God. But the foolishness, what we look in the word of Lord God and look and learn daily and believe the fact of truth is great wisdom. But no one can comprehend that apart from the Spirit of God to teach you. So here he says, any distorted thinking what the world thinketh, he says it's just like a distorted thinking. You know, there are many examples over here to learn. Many things. The world is there to research this body of what God the Father has made this to be, the holy temple of Lord God, and how accurately it goes to renovate itself according to the standards of the Word of God, under the guidelines of Bible doctrine of the Holy Spirit, being taught by the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, who has to be in return being appointed by Lord God the Father as Sharat minister, to daily exegete and accurately isolate and make up the things with categorical exposition of the word of Lord God, being driven and led by Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone. The impact that it can have upon your body. The world will say such and such by the age of 80 you have been last, because people also love to quote the reference of Psalms and say, 70 or 80 it's enough. No, dear brother, that's the beginning for your ministry. The first 40 years, it is nothing but for your preparation time. The second 40, the first 40 years, the worldly life, where with now we can calculate to be the preparation time. The next 40 years, refinement time. The next 40 years, from 80 to 120, it has to be nothing but daily teaching the word of Lord God. You may think there is no purpose of you to be on this earth. There is a lot of a purpose of you because unbelievers are waiting for the manifestation of the adult sons as Romans chapter 8. The adult sons who are mature enough, who are grown up in the word of Lord God, who are thinking upon the will of Lord God. These unbelievers, they're waiting, they're waiting to look what is there after life, after life, what is there in the death. They're looking and seeking for knowledge. And you should be the great people to give them to apply in the proper process of the word of Lord God being taught and kept like a knowledge secured in your brain. And then give them that wisdom when it has been needed. Crank out like a fragments to be made them to know what is that wisdom. Let them realize and come back ultimately to say, Renovate your thinking to become disciple-oriented person to the Lord God. Renovate your thinking to become the Lord's mind. That's what you have to give them. That's what you have to tell them. That's what you have to make them up. And they should come to know the truth. And that's what I've been making up to be for the Lord God every time. Because your life, what the world thinketh, it is going to end up by 70 or 8. You're going to grow old. No, dear brethren, you have now the purpose. Till the day you die, you have a purpose of becoming that one messenger of Lord God called to be Naged. In, in Jeremiah 51, in verse number 41 and following, when you can look at 31, it should be. The one messenger... Ekad Naged, that unique messenger, because every believer has been called now to be not just a messenger, but conforming to the image of Christ, like Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as it has been written in the volume, To do thy will, he said in Psalms chapter 40, 
or seven and eight so we being taken from the same rib of adam in the first adam illustration now the last adam rib we are the church then we also should be like christ for lord of god's will to be performed so till the day you die you have to be that eka the nage the minister to lord god that great one messenger to lord god to teach to these people the importance of the word of lord god and train these people the will of lord god far less you have been worry that's what the word sagab he says for you have been worried about the details of life the troubles of life just keep them aside money can solve them and money has been spoken they say people don't look into the grammar grammar is not needed when the bani speaks money is enough you have a million dollars in your account most of the problems are rotten out or sold out enough great how much it is because of that don't spoil your health don't spoil your vision don't spoil the things pertaining to the which lord god the father has intended for you on this earth he said the things pertaining to the ones on this world who have been there to the just people is going to give their treasure for you so don't worry lord god the father knows in the right time how to give you before the things could be passing out of the hand or control he knows how to get back if not wouldn't have given those promises for us in psalms 91 he says over here i will answer when when you call from the rising of the sun till to the going of the sun you want to have the thought process of bible doctrine that's what when you call i'm going to answer that's what it is the distorted thinking which you can get in a vigor and valor so he says i'm going to answer i'm going to deliver and now he says i will be with him in trouble <laughs> any pressure upon your head lord god the father says i will take care of it don't worry have faith in me learn the word of lord god you have a work on this earth till you die a work which the old testament saints couldn't do the new testament apostles till the canon of scripture they did afterwards we don't find such renovation of the work of daily teaching the word of lord god from genesis 1:1 to revelation 20 to 21 So this work is pending. So you have to do that. So don't worry about the pressures that could come upon your head, financial matters or this or that or anything. You know, people have been worried a lot, and people are thinking upon the strategies of the world, which they have been research, saying when you once reach this age or that age, this will happen, that will happen. Throw that stuff out. day by day you have the work of lord god you have great many things to do do the same routine what lord god the father wants you to do day by day carry your cross come back and learn the word of lord god go back and witness that learned word applying for your soul first and spirit transforming your thinking you'll get great peace because in returning and in rest you will be saved and you'll have your quietness and confidence your strength the passage what we read in Isaiah 13 verse number 15 in Isaiah 26:3 and 4 shalom shalom they have they that keep their eyes or their head upon thy law enough these things are enough more than sufficient for us we did not go to dig further and look and take we have so many things in the bible don't need this one thing is enough lord is there for us that's enough if lord god be with us who can be against us that's enough as he said to apostle paul my grace is sufficient for you and apostle paul says i can do all things through christ who strengthens me and do not mess it's enough what is that we require further to examine or tempt or cross check or wait and to see give us new revolution or give us this new promise now we have enough you have been sealed until the day of redemption when the day you believe in the lord and savior jesus christ by faith alone in christ alone that's enough look upon the planning of god for you look upon the calling of lord god for you 
Look upon the bona fide gift if you are a male believer given for you. Look upon the burden, the way how you have to endure yourself in that great work like John the Baptist who has given that work and has come for a very, very special ministry. Likewise, even Elijah. So what is your work? You just look now in the church age. If I have been there alive in this great and unique dispensation of the church age with all the completed canon scripture, with all the information given for us, then look what exactly Lord God the Father wants from you. Look that, seek that, search that, fulfill it. That's enough. Because he said, I'm going to deliver them. How is going to deliver them? The word called to be Sarah. And the meaning of the word Sarah, <laughs> for some it also includes rival wife. The wife who can be the last weapon used by Satan against man to do the will of God, as in the case of Job. All gone, the wife comes, saying that you curse God and you die, you know. Rival wife, she is be a great waxer. Adam heard the words of his wife, therefore the earth has been cursed, says the word of God. Likewise, you people also listen to the words of a woman who doesn't have the bona fide gift, and though the Bible says don't make her to be a preacher, having authority over the man, and you still make her, and you listen to her words, the earth is cursed, already your body has been cursed. Because she can give you, though may you think it's an accurate information, it's called to be stupid information because she doesn't have the bona fide gift. She's working out with her intellectual mind. Her emotional knowledge. It's not the right basic truth in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. So the same thing over here, the last weapon will be the rival wife. The same thing what they did, the Midianites, the woman whom they thought they can be helpful, they get and now Moses is wrath upon them. He says, why have you spared them? You want to fulfill the prophecy of which Balaam has told. And that's what it led. Constant pawns and tissues for them. The same thing for your life as well. Day by day you can be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Being dead to the world and the things of the world. And yet... You have been given that great privilege also to know how we can matter in the standards of what the world look at. So he says, any pressure that could come upon your head, it is high, who can clearly clean it out, including the rival wife. But you have a purpose. And that purpose is very, very great and unique. That purpose is to go and make disciples of all the nations. That purpose is something you make. That purpose is something great for us. So he says, I am going to deliver him. And he said, I am going to deliver him. I will be with him in trouble. And then I will deliver him. The word deliver over here is being called as collapse. That is, I will make him strong. I will make him to become invigorate. I will make him to become as a man who has been armed and equipped. And I'm going to rescue him. So the word over here, what we can look for collapse is nothing but... I am going to build up a wall of fortification as a discipleship program for him. No matter what may be the pressure, as you draw out of the lions for the next generation, your power, so I am going to deliver him out. Besides any pressure what you can have over here on this earth, he said, I am going to deliver him. Why? You have a purpose, you have a meaning, you have a great responsibility saying that it is not that age of eight you are going to die. Just throw that stuff out. Every believer has been called now to be greater than John the Baptist. The men are going to set free the bands of the wickedness, the fast which you are looking in Isaiah 58. You know, when they do that, he says in Isaiah chapter 58, in verse number seven or six, he says, is this not the fast that a look? 
to loose the bands of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. And now he says in verse 7, Is it not to deal the bread to the hungry, and that you bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when you see us the naked, that you cover him, and that you hide not, not thyself from thy own flesh? And then he said, then you, When you do this, he says, when, Then your light will break forth as the morning. And thine health shall spring forth speedily. You know, people are looking for health. And the righteousness shall go before thee. The kabod of the Lord God shall be the rare word. The word rare word is nothing but your brethren. That could be as a process to say that which is going to be as a great restorer or the one who goes to make up to be in the process of becoming as to be in the process of great association makes up for you to be absolutely reward. The word over here, what we can look, he says, is going to simply make you up to be received in the standards of his truth. Then he said, you shall call me and the Lord shall answer you. You shall cry and he shall say, here I am. If you take away from the midst of thee the yoke and the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity. That's what today people are feeding. Vanity, vanity, vanity. Therefore, renovate your thinking. And if you draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul then shall the light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday and the lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy the soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places that's what we're trying to do again to build up the word of Lord God in our pulpits what has been gone you shall rise up the foundations of many generations you know many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the bridge the restorer of the paths to dwell in you know this is the great blessing from verse 6 through 12 for them who want to be really following the lord of a god to be like john the baptist in the past dispensation we have only a glimpse over here but for us right now in the church age with the completed canon of scripture what sort of a great power we have you just look the great power of going and making disciples of all the nations just look and now he says, if you turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and you shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thy own ways, or own words, he says, then you shall delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. You know what does he say? If you call the Sabbath your pleasure, not doing the pleasure of your own, but the pleasure of Yehovah Elohim. And if you don't speak again your own words, that meant to say, well, don't talk the thinking of your own, talk the thinking of Bible doctrine. Therefore, he said, if anyone opens up their mouth, as Colossians 4, 6, be seasoned with salt. In First Peter 4, 11 and following, we look, be like the divine oracles of Lord God. You know, these things are very, very essential for us to learn and transform our thinking. But much of the people are not at all happy to know the thinking of my Christ. Not at all happy. And yet, he has been said over there. They want to inquire of me, but I will not be inquired of them, said the Lord God. Judge these people. And then he says, tell the things what they're doing over there, which I hate. If they turn back, rather polluting my name among the heathen. And if they love to live my ways of life, then they will surely enjoy a life called 2425 call. They begin with 2416, your birth. And then he would emphasize the things pertaining to the will of Lord God the Father to teach. 2421, your maturity life. Again, from there on, he says, your life will be 2425. These are the words what we read. Because the first thing, when you look upon 2416, it is called to be like a living one, the simple living one. The one from there you become to be like a living and from there on to live you come to become 
like the way how God should live in you, think it up, and then you rise up to look what exactly is God, what exactly is the questions you're going to find out about God, and then you're going to quicken your life. That's what 2421 called, that is what being born again in the Lord God, to look up on the standards of the Lord God. And that's how you're going to quicken up your life. That's what your 2421 life will be. From 2421, you're going to live a vigorous life, a life of great energy in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, a new creation in the Lord God called to be kind and ketesis. And then you're going to be like a great vigorous beast experience, what we're able to read, the four horns of the altar, followed by the lion, the ox, and the eagle. And from there on, if you can be 2424 code, you come to say you're living a base of 2421 life, and then you will reach 2425 code of life, that is, to live prosperously, prosperously, to live to be quickened, to be restored to life or health, and you're going to live such a life free from sickness, free from discouragement, free from faintness, free from death. So he says over there in Ezekiel chapter 20, in verse number 13, the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness, it says. They walked not in my status, but they despised my judgments. Each if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my Sabbaths they greatly polluted. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. When you don't walk according to the will of Lord God the Father, be ready to face the fury of the Lord God. That is, the things pertaining to your blood, what will happen when Lord God the Father will put a boundary. That means he has put a seal on that. What sort of a seal? Designed you for sickness. Because you're not obeying the word of Lord God. You know, the people may say, come once we'll have a checkup of our body because it's a free checkup. We have reached this age, that age. <laughs> Likewise over here, if we can go to checkup, Lord God the Father has put a seal. That is what he has put his fury and in his fury, he puts a wall of fortification to say the things that which is running in your blood is going to corrupt your mouth. That's what he's going to pour out, his fury. Because his thought process in your mouth is not for grammatious program. You're simply thinking, just let's be like a religion-minded Christian, come weekly once and then go off and enjoy the life. He says, that fury will be upon you. The thought process in your mouth will never be for discipleship program at all. Will never be for grammatious program at all. It will be for fury, dear brother. That's what the things are happening. Every time you look, this is what the things are happening. The fury, fury goes on there. So dear brethren, he says, he's going to pour out his fury. The fury begins when Lord God the Father has put a wall of fortification in your blood. And what happens over there? Like the way what you can call the sun effect, the sun heat. And then where he was in the wilderness, again your thought process is not for Bible doctrine. And then he said to consume you. Why am I going to consume you? Because you're not grown up into grammatias. You're not able to make up your life to be the grammatious program. You're not able to make up your life to be disciple-oriented, to go and make disciples of all the nations. Therefore, I'm going to consume you. And that should be a great pain for you. A very great pain for you. And that dear brethren, when Lord God the Father fury comes upon you, you're not able to live a life that which could be free from discouragement, free from sickness, free from faintness, and free from death. You're not living such a life to law. They're very far away from that. So he says, live prosperously. Be quickened day by day in the word of Lord God. Restore your life to health. 
Our purpose will have a meaning so that people are looking and seeking and searching for answers of knowing eternal life in Christ. And if you don't send forth Christ in you, you are having the keys not to open up on your, yourself not entering, neither you are making others to enter, that will be the fate of you. Because those perishing souls have been looked upon you in your life. And in India we have a great business with them. Many unbelievers are there for us. And they will be in touch with you. You'll be having not many Christian friends over here, but unbelievers. If you open up your keys through the life being dealt in indwelt by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and built up, what a great opportunity it is for you to shine forth Christ. And yet, dear brethren, the thing pertaining to the adder kind of ministry, what the world is looking, rather than looking upon eagle kind of ministry, to search the truth. Men are simply happy yet to obey for poisonous adder thoughts rather than vision of the thoughts to become not just fishermen but hunters in the Lord God. But the world will vanish in his thoughts. The world will be the great wound of Lord God making man on the earth because the pain has become incurable. Because we, the one who have to be the balm to heal the wound of the Lord God, have become traitors rather than becoming great bond slaves of Christ. We have become traitors to the cause. And a dear brethren, how many days more you still want to live a life that which is contrary to the truth? And if you are still living such a life, wake up to know the truth because unbelievers are vanishing. They are waiting for the appearance of the adult sons in Lord. And yet, you may say you have been there rejoicing in the Lord God. If you don't bakash, I have a desire to shine forth His glory, to shine forth His praise. That is, your body shall shine to say, should be disciple oriented to the Lord God. If you don't have that, better you will not find any reason or purpose why you are living on this earth, except to die your own self in your sins. Lord God is our inheritance, He is our portion. Being a wise man, you build up according to the terms of His will. A foolish one will make up the body to be ruled by the blood. The wise one will make up the thinking to rule in your soul through the word of God in this blood. So which is the thing you desire? A wise one or the foolish one? In order to become a wise one, day by day you need to gather in the information of the word of Lord God to be learned. If you are not taking in the information of the word of Lord God every day, then there is no knowledge. And when there is no knowledge, you don't know when to apply that wisdom. So dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short. And the responsibility to lay down upon our shoulders is too large. So which way you want to go, you decide. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, led us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, led us to the praise of His glory. So with our head burned eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In the order of the telling to Lord God the Father with the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that is the moment itself, we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us are very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest mass to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, where with you shall then acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teaches the great mandate is to carry so thorn long on. Herald the word in season out of sin, because the dhamma to my witnesses for it have been called. And no one dhamma to my witnesses in the Trinity, for the Bible in our hands. 
And number two, I'm out to my witnesses or hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire and the cross will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost will with us. To the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinitely divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, being grateful and thankful for this time, our Lord, as we grant our fellowship with Thee through the Word. Understanding that you haven't been inquired by the people of Israelite in Ezekiel chapter 20, O Lord. But now when we come to seek and search over you for you on this earth, the unbelieving crowd is waiting for us to be found you in us, O Lord. And yet the church is not prepared for that to happen in this life. Help us, O Lord, to train them up to their will. We could ask nothing but, O Lord, help as a side of edition woman could back. The things which have fallen from your table, we are eating it. The information of the 66 books. If it is thy will, O Lord, help us more to investigate and learn more. Because, O Lord, we desire nothing on this earth apart from your word. So, Father, be grateful and thankful for this great privilege you have given to us. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message. And make many people to realize the high, holy, heavenly calling of yours to be inquired. And make you known to be shining in their lives, in the age of your time given to us to fulfill all the days of your life. And be a grateful witness for your word. So, Father, being grateful and thankful for this, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.